Hi, thanks for watching. This is part four of building a style arsenal in Affinity Designer. In this segment, we're going to build one more brush and then create a style. Let's jump in. To create this brush, I'm going to grab the brush we created in our very first video in the designer persona, and I'm going to adjust the size variance. I'm using a pressure sensitive tablet, so um, if, if you don't have that, if you draw, you're going to get a straight flat line unless you go up to the controller and select the pressure option. So now by using my pressure, I can get a thick to thin variation. So I'm going to draw a bunch of lines, parallel and kind of overlapping. I want to create a brush that's going to have a lot of solidity in the center, but um, kind of feather out on the edges. So build a little bit more here. I'm going to make it kind of scratchy looking. And it's going to get used for some text we're going to do in part five. And as with any brush that we use in designer persona, the intensity brushes are actually masks, so we have to reverse it to make the brush strokes white on a black background before we take them into the export persona. If you've been following the series, you should know how to do this by now, so we'll kind of speed through this. And if you need a refresher, go back and look at the previous videos. So back in Designer Persona, we'll create a new textured brush using the same graphic that we just exported. And once we have that in, select it. And uh, there we have the kind of fuzzy loose ends. We're going to switch that from stretch to repeat. I'm going to drag in the head and tail offset lines until I get a nice brush. I always like to watch out for those um, kind of banding that can occur. And whenever possible, I create my brushes with that in mind, looking for places that'll connect up and create what look like contiguous lines, even though it's actually a repeated brush stroke. Okay, so in Designer, I drew a rectangle and now I'm switching to Pixel Persona. And I'm gonna uh, fill that area with a pattern based on that snowflake brush we created last time. And uh, if you haven't checked out episode three to create uh, complex brushes. So this guy, I'm gonna increase the size a little bit. And the whole point of this brush is to create in a few seconds, the appearance of hours of cross hatching. So, um, the, the hatch marks are going to overlap and blend and we'll create that, that illusion of hatch marks. If you click a point with your brush and then shift click somewhere else, um, it will create a line between those two points and fill them with the brush pattern. So it's a quick way of painting straight lines really quickly. And this works for any pixel brush. You might notice I am decreasing the size of the brush every few lines or so just to kind of create a gradient of texture with the holes in the um, pattern getting smaller as I go down. Okay, and with that finished, I'm going to grab these pixel layers that I created and um, turn them into a group by holding Command-G or Control-G on the PC. And then I'm going to right click to rasterize them. And then take that one layer, drag it below and to the right of my rectangle layer, and that's going to mask that pattern inside. And lastly, I'm going to create a mask on the rectangle by clicking the uh, add mask button at the bottom of the layers palette, and then s simply picking the gradient tool, I'm going to drag a gradient down in the mask, and that's going to conceal the bottom of the edge. So I'm going to ch change the two color stops, make the bottom one absolutely black and the top one absolutely white. Whatever is black is concealed, whatever is white is revealed, and the grays in between are various degrees of transparency. Since for this texture I do want a transparent background, I'm going to open up the document setup settings, click the transparent background button, and then head over to the export persona so that my PNG file will have um, that transparent background included. Okay, I've drawn a rectangle, and with the gradient tool option, I'm gonna go up to type, select bitmap, and then find the image we just exported. Once you've opened that file, the two handles that are provided allow you to rotate or to scale the image according to what you like. 
You can also click and drag to move by clicking the middle handle. Under the extend menu at the top of the screen, I'm gonna choose zero, and that just creates one instance of the image instead of creating a repeated image. To turn our object into a style that we can apply with a click of a button, just go to the styles palette, add a new category, we will rename it to style arsenal, just to keep track of everything. And if you didn't know, you can apply multiple strokes and multiple fills just using the appearance palette. And then under the style menu, click add style from selection. And then whenever you want to apply that style to another object, just click the button. Okay, we've finished with our style arsenal and now comes the fun part. In part five, we're going to recreate this illustration using our style arsenal. So hope you join me then. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.